Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. So you have your server set up and everything works, but you didn't bother with a cache drive at the time. So now you're thinking it's time to benefit from the quicker write speeds it offers. Or maybe you have a cache drive, but now you want to upgrade it to a larger one. Or maybe you want to get really advanced and set up a cache pool. So let's jump in and see the best and easiest way to get this done. So before we start, let's firstly talk about why I have a cache drive at all. Well, with a cache drive, we can massively speed up the array. What we can do is we can set up shares that write their data to this fast cache drive first, and then later on, when the server isn't busy, the server then moves this data from the cache drive over to the parity protected array. So anyway, why is writing directly to the array so much slower than writing to a normal disk? Well, most people will tell you it's because it's having to write to a parity disk as well. But whilst this is correct, it's not the whole story. The fact is, is the computer actually has to read the data before it can write it. And it uses a technique called RMW, which stands for Read, Modify, Write. And what this is, is when a write is sent to the array, the array first reads the sectors on the data drive where the new data is going to be written, and it also reads the parity blocks on the parity drive that relate to that data. So, that's the read part. So now with those two reads, it can calculate the new parity for the data it's about to write. So that's the modify bit. But before it can do the last part, the write bit, it has to wait for the platter to rotate back around to bring the block back into the correct position so it can finally write the data and the new parity blocks. So it being slower isn't due to the fact of two different drives being written to, it's basically everything that has to happen beforehand. So, a cache drive is good for fast writes to the array, but it also can be used to store data that you want the fastest read and write speeds for, such as to store VM images or dockers, and this gives them far better performance. Now, the best drives to use for cache drives have to be SSDs, not only just for their speed, but also they have no moving parts and they consume far less energy than their mechanical counterparts. So this makes them ideal candidates for a drive that's going to have a lot of heavy use. But with a cache drive, we must think about should the drive fail, do we have a backup of the data? Especially if we only have the one cache drive in our server. And yes, we can have more than one cache and actually set them up in a RAID configuration for either redundancy or striped for even more cache speed. So in this tutorial, we're going to do the following. One, add a cache drive to an existing server that doesn't have one. Two, replace a cache drive with a larger one. And three, add a second cache drive creating a cache pool in a BTRFS RAID configuration. OK, so on my test server, I only have two drives assigned. I have a parity drive and I have one data disk. As you can see, there's no cache drives. But I do have two unassigned devices here. I have a Toshiba hard drive at 60 gigs and a Hitachi hard drive at 250 gigs. So let's just have a look at our shares. These are the shares that are on the server. Now when we put a cache drive in, we're going to want some of these shares to be on the cache. So let's have a look at what shares should go where. The shares that should be on the cache drive all the time are the app data, which is used for data for dockers, the domains, which is used for our VMs, and the system share, which is used for things like our Docker image and some system files for the VMs to run. So some shares do best on both the cache drive and the array, and these are called cache-enabled shares. And so what happens is first the data goes onto the cache drive, and then later on it's transferred over onto the parity-protected array. So any share where you often write data to, it's best to have it as a cache-enabled share. And the download share is one example of a share that's like this. And other shares that are seldomly written to, keep them on the array only. There's no point having things like media shares that you normally read files from on a cache-enabled share. Okay, so let's have a look at the shares that should be on the cache drive. Let's look at the app data. Um, as you can see here, we've got an option that says use cache disk. So we have no that will keep it off the cache altogether. We have yes that will keep it on the cache drive, but it will also be on the array. And we have only 
where it will only have it on the cache drive and it will never be moved to the array. And we have one here called Prefer. Now with Prefer, it will store it on the cache, but then if the cache runs out of space, it will then continue to put it on the array. And also we have this Prefer, if we don't have a cache drive, it will store it on the array. And then if a cache drive becomes available, when we run Mover, it will then move it from the array onto the cache drive. So this is what we want to set all our shares to, which we want to have on the cache drive when we add the cache drive in a few moments. And we need to check that's the same for our domains and the same for our system. So let's add our cache drive. So to add the cache drive, we're going to have to stop the array. So with the array stopped, you choose one of your unassigned drives on the server. I'm going to use the Toshiba drive here. So now all we need to do is just to scroll down and to click on to start array. And now if we scroll down here, you'll see the cache drive is unmountable. Now this is because it's not been formatted. So all we need to do is tick this box here and click on to format. And as you can see that's been done. And by default it's, it's formatted in BTRFS. Um, but if we look inside the cache drive, there are no shares here. And that's because they're still on the array. And what we need to do is we need to move them here onto the cache. And to do that, we need to scroll down and then to click on the button Move Now. And this will move all of our shares that we have set as Prefer Cache onto the cache drive. OK, now you can see the move is finished. And if we click on it again, we'll see it will just run and there's nothing for it to move. So let's have a look at the disks. Well, we can see here that the app data is no longer here and the domains is no longer here. But why have we got this system folder still here? And we can see in here, we've got our Docker image here and we've still got the libvert image here as well. So let's have a look at our cache drive. And we have a system folder and inside we've got a Docker folder and we have our libvert folder. Well, the reason this hasn't copied across is because these files are in use at present. Because we've got our Dockers and our VMs enabled. So what we need to do is we need to go to Docker and we need to click on here and set the Docker enabled to be no. And we need to do the same for the VM manager. We need to set that to be no. So now those files won't be in use. So now we can go down and we can click on move now and we'll see the movers running again. And so now that will move those files across. And then when the files have moved successfully across, we can re-enable Docker and re-enable VMs. Okay, movers now finished. So let's have a look at our cache drive now. And now if we go back to system, we'll see that our Docker image has been moved across and our libvert image has been moved across. But now what we'll do as we have our cache drive set up is we go to the download share here and we would enable it to use the cache drive. So now it's able to use the cache drive as well. So we can click on apply and click on done. Okay, and so after having put the cache drive in, we can now go back and we can start up our Docker. And now if we just run one of the Dockers just to check it works. And let's just check the Docker works. And everybody's working fine. Okay, so there may be times when we want to replace our cache drive with a different drive. And that's really easy to do. But what we have to make sure we do is that we copy all of the stuff off our cache drive before we remove it from the server. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have Squid's Community Applications plugin installed. And if you don't know how to do that, then go to the Lime Technology Forums and scroll down until you come to Application Support and then go to Plugin Support. Here you'll see the plugin community applications. Scroll down to here where you see this line of code and copy this location. And you can close this and click onto plugins and click install plugin. Paste that into there and click install and that will install the plugin. And now you'll see that we have an apps tab. There's going to be a Docker we're also going to need so we'll install that now. And that Docker is a file manager called Crusader. So let's do a search for Crusader and click on to add. That should be on forward slash MNT forward slash. And then for the host path two, we have that in our app data folder and forward slash KDE. And then just click apply. This will then pull down this Docker and install it. 
Okay, so when that's done, you have all the software that you need. But what we need to do is just set up a couple of shares where we're going to back up the things that we're going to use. So first, let's just make a share, and we'll just call it App Data Backup. And that will back up our app data. And obviously, you don't want to use the cache drive. And our second share, we'll just call it VM Backup. And again, of course, we don't want to use the cache. OK, so we've got our two backup folders created. So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Settings. And now under the Community Applications, you see we've got a Backup and Restore tab. The first thing we need to do is fill out where our app data is. So click onto here and click App Data. We then need to save this to a disk or to a share. So we're going to click to a share, so we're going to have this onto User. And for destination share, click here and we'll choose the one we just created here, App Data Backup. And if you scroll down here, we can also back up things such as our flash drive, but we don't want to do that right now. And also backing up our VM XMLs, we're not going to bother doing that either. And so that's all the things we need to do on here. So now click on to apply, click OK, and now click back up now. OK, and now that's complete. If we look at our shares, we should see in here now that we've got our two app data folders in here. So you can see we've we've copied this folder here, so now we want to go on and do our VMs in the domains. And so for that we're going to use the the Docker we've just installed, so we're going to use Crusader. So click on here, then go to Web UI, and then you'll see two columns of files. And if you go down here, you'll see Unraid, and that's what we mapped to earlier to our forward slash MNT forward slash. So if we click on here, we can see all of our disks and our user shares. So we want to copy from the cache drive, so let's click onto here. And now let's go on this side and find our user share and our VM backup. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this across here, our domains, and drop it here and just click copy here. So with that copied, now we want to go across to settings and we want to go onto our VM manager and then we want to disable the VM manager by clicking onto no. And now we're going to go back to Crusader and we're going to go back into this system file here and we're going to copy across the libvert folder and copy it to here. Okay, so now that's copied. And in the system file, there's also the Docker image here. But we're not going to copy this because it can cause problems copying this file sometimes. So what we'll do is we'll recreate that later. So now let's take a look inside the cache drive. So we've copied the app data, we've copied the domains, and we've also copied the libvert in the system folder. And so with everything copied, we can now replace the cache drive. And so it's now time to go down and to stop the array. And at this point, you then shut down the server, remove the existing cache drive, and put your new cache drive in. But as I've already got another drive in my server, I'm not going to do that bit. I'm just going to go to the bit where we're swapping over the cache. So just under the cache section, just select the new drive, and then start the array. And as it's a new drive, it says it's unmountable, so all we have to do is just format it. So just click here and click Format. And now our cache drive is 250 gigs. But if we have a look here, obviously we've got no folders here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our settings and we want to go to our backup and restore. So now we want to click on the restore app data tab and then just go down and click restore and OK. And now that's complete. So now if we go back to our main tab and we look on our cache, we see now we've got the app data in here fine. So now we need to rebuild our Docker image in the new cache drive. So go to Docker and then click on to No to disable the Dockers and apply and then done. And now click delete Docker image file and then click on to apply. And then done. And now we just need to start the Docker engine again. So go back to Docker and click on that and then click on to yes and then apply and then done 
and so now if we go back and take a look inside the cache drive and see the files there we'll see that we can see the system file now with the docker image inside okay so now it's time to put the dockers back inside the docker image so for that click on to docker and you'll see there's no dockers here at all so what we want to do is click add container and then click on select a template and then in the list you'll see this one that says my and this one says bin hex mb the one i'm going to choose so any template that says my is the one you want and then scroll down you'll see it's already filled out for you and then click on to apply it will pull down the docker and everything will be back how it was so now that's done and you can see that the MB docker's back here. Um, make sure you do that for all of your dockers. I'm just going to quickly install my other docker, the Crusader docker, as we're going to need that now. So just click onto your other dockers and install them. Okay, so once you've restored your dockers, then go to your Crusader docker and start up that. And so now we want to go back to our Unraid share here and go back to our user share. Now we want to go to our VM back up here and we want to go back to here and now go to our cache drive here go to our system data just pull this across to here our domains needs to go into our cache drive into this area here so we just want to drop this into here and click copy here okay so now that's moved across and so now with the domains moved across we can go to our vm manager and re-enable vms again and then test a vm and now if we go to our vm tab we can see we've got the fedora vm still there um, because all the xml files were copied over inside the libvirt image so let's just check this actually works and it should work fine because in the libvirt file it also has the nvrams for the ovmf and this being an OVMF VM, it should boot fine because we've copied all that over. Now if we hadn't have done that and only copied the XML, then this machine wouldn't boot. Okay, so now let's add a cache drive to the cache pool. So we've got our existing cache drive here, a 250 gig drive, and there's another 250 gig drive here that's unassigned. So I'm going to use this one and add it as a cache drive creating a cache pool. So to do that, we need to first stop the array. And then where it says slots, we want to add a second slot for our second cache drive. And now we're going to choose the other Hitachi drive. And now we just need to start the array again. So with the array started again, we can see the two hard drives here with a total size of 250 gigs. And even though we've got two 250 gig drives, it's automatically set up in a RAID 1, giving us a mirrored RAID. So should one of the hard drives fail, we'd still be okay. But you don't have to keep it as a RAID 1. You could make it a RAID 0 and stripe the data across both the drives, and this would give us much better performance, but then we'd lose the redundancy. So to change the RAID level, just click on the top cache drive, and it will bring us into the settings for that. You'll see now we can see the pool information. And here you can see that we have a RAID 1, so it's a mirrored RAID, and the balance status at the moment, balance is running, and we have 81% left until it's finished. So if I was to let this finish, I'd have a fully mirrored cache, but I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna click cancel. I want to change the RAID level. And now you'll see here next to the button that says balance, we can actually put in a command that will convert the RAID into the type of RAID that we want. And these are the various different RAIDs that we can have on Unraid. So you can see in the list above all the different RAID levels that we can use. So all we have to do is basically type that command into the box next to balance. And I'm going to use the one that's like JBOD and type that one in there. So I'm going to put single here. But you can use whatever RAID level you require. And once the command's in there, just click on the button that says balance. And it will take quite a long time for it to balance the drive and to be complete. But then afterwards you'll have the RAID level that you require. Okay, so now the balancing is finished and you can now see that the two cache drives together now come to a total size of 500 gigs and we've got 461 gigs free and have used 38 gigs. So guys, that's all about the different ways we can use cache drives in Unraid and that brings us to the end of another video. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful, so if you did, then please hit that like button and if you're not already a subscriber to the channel then please please hit the subscribe button and subscribe and anyway whatever you're up to for the rest of the day I hope it's good and I'll catch you all in the next video